All right. So when we left off, we were doing flat color behind the bird, but I had openings in the bird, which I could tell by looking at the fill that I did, right? And then just right from the flat color layer with the fill, I erased them out. I'll continue to do that. And the sensitivity on my magic wand is pretty forgiving. It's at 66. The default is 32, and I think that's probably a better one to use. So now if I click on the outside, there's still some openings. <laughs> Let's see if I can get rid of those. I have a lot of line work, right? So makes sense. Could be things I'm missing. Works so well with the rabbit. And it's not the worst thing in the world if I just use a pretty heavy hand to erase inside my shape here and just kind of go all the way around it. This will help me in, in my coloring for a while. So this step in digital coloring, which is different than digital painting, this is called flatting, F-L-A-T-T-I-N-G, flatting. And it's giving you just a clean color layer behind the different things in your image that you'll want to add color to. Whether it's a comic book character, whether it's an illustration, whether it's a vehicle. When you flat, that means any local color needs to be a different flat color. So what is local color? Local color is the color something is no matter what the lighting condition is. So the local color of a banana is yellow, right? The local color of an unripe banana is green. It doesn't matter if it's in a dark closet or if it has a spotlight shining on it. The local color of my hair is dark brown. The local color of my skin is kind of a yellowish pink. Uh, the local color of a rabbit might be kind of a tan color. So flatting fills behind your line work with whatever the local color is. So let's see, I've got contiguous on, it's at 32. I just wanna, the outside, there we go. I finally have sealed it up, except for in there. <laughs> Almost there. So you can see how the selections can help you see where you might need uh, some attention on your line work, especially if your line work is thin and delicate. Okay, now I think I'm ready. Let me check it again. Good. Okay, so now I have a flat selection shape. What I'm gonna do is move that to a new layer and then just fill that in with my blue. Whoops. <laughs> Select inverse. There we go. And I'll fill that in with my blue. So that is a, what traditional flatting looks like. Notice how that's very different than this because this was selected around my line work. And if I wanted that same look, I could go to my line work here. That's traditional flatting. And I could select all the empty space on my line work. So turn off contiguous on my line work layer, right? Everything that's not a vector black shape now is selected. And then select the inverse and then delete that from my solid flatting layer. And there we go. So now I have some color layers to work with, which already look pretty cool. And because if you do a lot of line work, you don't need to worry so much about color variation. So what's the next step? Well, this is kind of boring, especially for the rabbit, which is, it just looks really open and flat. I want highlights and I want shadows. So this is what's called duotone coloring. This image, this inspiration is flat color. There's just two inks used on white paper. But this image, this has duotone color. You'll notice that the blues, you have light blues and dark blues in the blues. The reds, you have light reds and dark reds in the red. 
And then they also overlap and you get this darker purple, right? In dark values and light values, depending on how much it overlaps. So how can I make these more like this? Well, I'm going to add a new color layer, which is called the duotone layer. And I do it by duplicating my first flat color layer with Command J. So this is my bunny flat color copy, or what I'll call it is my duotone color layer. Duotone just means splitting one local color into at least two tones. Now, how do I do that? So this is for the bunny. I'm going to go to image adjustment levels, and I'm going to brighten it up with my midtones, right? That's the most basic way. I could go to image adjustments and color balance, or even hue saturation, and mess with it a little bit as well. As long as I don't mess with the hue too much, it's still duotone color. But I can really brighten it or darken it this way. And I want something a little bit more like that, so I want something really saturated and a little darker. Maybe there. Okay, now, I can do a lot of things. If I want a soft edge do a tone, I could turn it into a gradient. I can do a gradient fill. But if I want what's called a cut edge do a tone, which is what a lot of uh, anime and animation uses, I'm going to take my lasso and I'm simply going to use my lasso to draw where I think the highlights should be. So I'm going to outline where the highlights would be on this bunny rabbit. I'm doing it pretty loosely, just to show you. And this is called cut edge or hard edge duotone because I'm deciding, I'm making my own lines here wherever I think the highlights should be. And you'll get a sense once I actually finish this selection of how that might look. And then I can alter that selection. So I can, uh, wherever I want shadows, I can kind of delete those from that selection, like where one bunny ear overlaps the other bunny ear, or inside the bunny ear. I want there to still be these duotone shadows. And I can add, I want to highlight on this paw here, even though it's not connected to the rest. And I want to highlight just on the back of this foot here. Okay, so now what do I do? I simply hit delete. And now I have two tones. But it's not very distinct yet, right? But that's my cut edge duotone right there. And I can erase more from it if I want to. So if I thought, oh, I want a little bit of highlight spilling in here on the cheek, I can do that. Just delete it out. So that is hard-edged or cut-edged duotone. I can do a little highlight on the nose, cut it out. And because I have my flat color underneath, which is this, then I can simply duplicate my flat color again and then play with its hue saturation, its levels and brighten that up. <laughs> so that's a duotone bunny right there. Now the eye looks white, but the eye is not white. <laughs> the eye was just never colored in. So if I want the eye to be white, I would actually need to to paint that in. You know, that would be a different flat color than the rest. Okay, so let's show you duotone with the bird. So this is what's called cut edge duotone. With the bird, I'm gonna do a soft edge duotone, where I use light and dark. I'm gonna duplicate the flat color on the bird. I'm gonna go to hue saturation. I'm gonna take its lightness down. 
make it quite a bit darker, kind of like in here, right? Maybe increase the saturation of it a little bit. Maybe shift its hue a tiny bit, right? And this time, I'm not going to use the lasso to erase. I'm going to use my eraser tool to erase. And I'm going to take the hardness of my eraser brush all the way down. And then I'm just going to erase away wherever I want the highlights. Ooh. Soft and delicate, pretty. So this is one form of soft edge duotone. I can even take the opacity down on my eraser, right? So it hits it at different amounts in different places, but it's just going between dark blue and light blue. All at once. So what does that look like? Well, that's my soft edge duotone layer. And it's letting it through. And then of course I can duplicate the flat color underneath and then play with its hue saturation to better complement my choices. Lighten it up. Now this is hard to see without the line work on top, right? But you can see how that soft edge looks very different. Than the, the hard edge or the cut edge do a tone of the rabbit. And then I can always just use the paintbrush too, and I can use a soft edge paintbrush, steal my duotone color on the duotone layer and kind of paint those tones back in at different opacities. And this is a lot like digital painting, except it's happening behind an outline. And that's the definition of digital coloring. Color put in digitally behind a real or implied outline. That is digital color. I could even make a new layer where I use the same brush, but I set it to multiply. And that way it will get darker and darker as I, within blue, as I layer it up. So I can get a lot more color value range from duotone color than from flat color. And I can get more still from soft edge duotone color than from cut edge or hard edge duotone color. So let's see what these coloring layers actually look like. You know, they might look like that versus this for the bunny, right? Now, to me, that looks a little clunky and it's trying a little too hard in coloring. So what's another way I could do it? <clears throat> well, I can just do a gradient fill, right? So what if I take all of this, I just have it duplicated and then I fill it with a gradient overlay and I make that gradient overlay it's pretty straightforward just going between a dark blue and a light blue and I can steal those from reference right so I can steal a dark blue like that should be able to let's see So I can take a dark blue like this and then have that gradate to a light blue like this. And then when I fill it in, I can set it to be normal. And I can set the angle of the gradation. So that looks kind of nice. <laughs> I'm going to keep that angle. I can also play with the scale of it. Like how chunky is it? How varied is it? So that's a very subtle duotone. Do you guys see that? From the light blues on top to the dark blues at the base. 
And so that's how you can set up your